Hello everyone, it's RJ with Roads to Liberty. Before I get started, I want to just point out that this video is about promoting freedom and continuing a conversation that mankind has been having for ages. This isn't about me being right and others being wrong, and I certainly don't have the answers for your life, just as you probably don't have them for mine. So anyway, um, today's video is entitled, Free People Don't Support Rulers. And it is a response to the current debate that's happening between um, and um, among the libertarians with regards to whether or not um, it's worthwhile to support, for the most part, Donald Trump, but it could be other pol political candidates, perhaps um, Bernie Sanders. But for me, this was particularly motivated by the Donald Trump um, question. And there's an actual uh, recent um, debate video between Adam Kokesh and Richard Heathen, which... Um, was done on NRCast, which is Jeff Berwick's podcast, and um, that was the the video that really inspired me to come out and sort of talk on this topic. Um, my position on this wasn't represented in the video, and as I said in the intro here, it's not about me telling you that I'm right and you being wrong, although it is about us promoting freedom or living our lives the way we wish to live our lives. In my belief, democracy itself, supporting any candidate, um, even Ron Paul, is not a productive way to pursue freedom in the world for ourselves and for other people. In the video of Adam de uh, debating Richard Heathen on Anarchast, everyone, all three, the host and the two um, parties to the debate, were in agreement that had Ron Paul been running for um, presidential office in 2016 that they would all um, be supporting Ron Paul. Um, we're all flawed, including myself, obviously. I stand right within that, that um, description without a doubt. It's, it's easy to go from that um, conclusion that, that we recognize our own imperfection and then say, well, I need someone more perfect than myself to, to rule me or to lead me. The first question I want to pose to you guys is, is it a libertarian thing to support Donald Trump? or to support any other candidate? Is it libertarian to support political candidates? Um, the second thing we'll get into now is what is a libertarian anyway? Um, what does it mean to, to call yourself a libertarian? Um, according to Merriam-Webster um, Merriam Dictionary, an advocate, uh, a libertarian is an advocate of the doctrine of free will. This is the lowercase use of the word libertarian. So, um, lowercase l, libertarians are advocates of the doctrine of free will. Let's unpack that a little bit. Um, free, we understand what free means, unbridled, um, unrestricted. Will being the motives or the desires or intentions of, of an individual. Free will must, by definition, be compromised whenever rulers are in power. What is the meaning? What is the effect of a ruler being in power if they're not able to compromise the will of some individual or some groups of individuals. If the candidate you want to go into power is going to, let's say in Donald Trump's case, build a wall or force companies to bring jobs to America and not allow them to pay people in other countries to do jobs. Or if your candidate is Bernie Sanders and your candidate is, um, is interested in trying to give out a free education by way of college degree or free health care, for, for those people to receive those things or for, for the wall to go up or for the jobs to come back to America, the person overseas has to lose a job. The person who owns the business has to be told, here's who you can hire, here's who you can't. So those are real individual wills, the will, um, the, the intentions, the desires, the wishes of individuals being restricted by rulers. So this, to me, shows a natural flaw in democracy itself. In, in addition to that, it also shows me that there's a flaw in any political order of any type, um, especially those that, re that require having rulers. Um, Alexis de Tocqueville wrote Democracy in America over 200 years ago, and his perspective then was that democracy is a, um, is a step in the right direction for, for mankind. It represents individuals getting control over the political hierarchies that, that they um, are subject to. Now, right there, it seems to acknowledge that 
Um, in fact, I, I don't think the Tocqueville makes any um, bones about it that, that, in fact, up until that point, up until the point where democracy started to become more prevalent in the world, and, and including till today, as where democracy becomes perhaps more or less the default political means of organization, the notion is that somehow this means of political structure is, is more free for the individual than others. Um, it makes the bold pres uh, presumption that the people in a democracy retain control over the outcomes. Um, it, it assumes that there's no collusion. It assumes that there's no corruption. It assumes that there is no means of creating a facade or an appearance of the people having control when votes or organizations or parties are able to um, deflect the will of the people. Um, but even in a pure democracy, I would, I would want to just point out, I don't believe that even in a pure democracy that it's possible for real freedom to be promoted because what happens is it becomes essentially mob rule. Mm -hmm. If 51% of the people vote for a candidate and the candidate does X, Y, and Z um, things through their policy, then 51% of the people are inflicting their free will to vote onto their neighbors, causing their neighbors to not have the free will to do what they want, whether it's put solar panels on the roof, whether it's to drive a gas-guzzling vehicle, whether it's to sunbathe in the nude, whatever things or just sunbathe period, <laughs> or just go fishing in a river, which you need permits for in many parts of um, civilized society today. Democracy is an instrument we, that, that I would maybe be going too far, but to say somewhat non-freedom oriented people, I was gonna say tyrannical, um, but freedom people who are less interested in freedom can use democracy to achieve their will at the expense of free will of other people. So I went a little bit a long way around the bush here in saying that to me, democracy as well as any other political uh, method of organization is always going to achieve a reduction of freedom. Um, not the, that, not the, uh, the opposite of that, which for a long time people believe that we need a government that can protect our freedoms. It's quite the opposite. We need no government such that we can protect our freedoms individually. We need to self-govern so as to ensure we have freedom. Their acts, the act is one and the same. Self-government is freedom. Outsourcing government to a leader or a ruler is the reduction of freedom, is the relinquishing of freedom. So moving along, um, in my view, there aren't and never have been and cannot logically be political leaders. The term leader is something that reflects a choice. You don't, you aren't told who leads you. Oftentimes when a president is elected into power, the opponents, the group that voted for the other candidate in, in, a, in a feigning act of patriotism will sort of bow down to the new ruler and refer to that ruler as a leader and say, well, we have to respect the office of the president. Well. You may choose to respect the office of the president, but when you start to say we have to, you're still you're 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 still hanging on to that that grip of power and saying, all right, this is what my neighbor has to do. This is what my fellow man has to do. They have to respect this person, including the people that you were just standing arm in arm with. You voted. Let's say you voted for uh, um, Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump was elected. Well, as a Bernie Sanders um, voter, you might say to your fellow Bernie Sanders voter, hey, it's a shame we didn't win, but we still have to respect Donald Trump now that he's president. Well, we don't have to. <laughs> you may want to, but for you to say what someone else has to do, you're committing the fatal error, error of reducing the very thing that you claim to be trying to increase, which is freedom. Now, it may be the case that you don't want to increase freedom. Um, you might be a consequentialist or, or, or a um, utilitarian where you just say, well, I don't care about freedom. I care about what is, quote unquote, best for the most people overall. Okay, at least you're honest about it. At least in that case, whoever that may be, you're not pretending to have a, a desire for freedom as much as just believing that you're right and believing that people that are 
agreeing with you know what's best for everyone and that the world will be a better place when you have your way and you can inflict those rules or guidelines or structures upon other people. If you're doing that, if you're voting for a candidate or if you're pushing for an outcome and trying to inflict it upon other people, it doesn't matter whether you call yourself a Democrat or Republican or a Libertarian because you're still committing that fatal error of trying to use a political apparatus through rulers, not leaders, but through rulers because they're not chosen, they're inflicted upon other people. You're trying to use rulership to achieve what you believe is the best ends. So it's contradictory to real freedom. Um, going on here, this is why I believe that despite Adam Kokesh taking a position of that, um, saying that libertarians shouldn't support Donald Trump, I think he only goes part way. And this is evidenced by the fact that he himself plan has uh, announced his plans to run for presidency himself in the year 2020. And he said himself that he would have supported Ron Paul as a candidate in 2016. The view I'm advocating right now, just to present it again, again is that no political candidate whatsoever, regardless of their platform, regardless of the things they say, no political candidate in a democratic system, in a dictatorship system, in a communist system, it doesn't matter. In a monarchy, it doesn't matter. No political candidate whatsoever can accurately promote freedom. You can't take away freedom. You can't enhance freedom by taking away freedom. Okay? This sounds really obvious when I'm pre presenting it in this way, but when you think about the implications that democracy and voting and promoting any political candidate, libertarian or otherwise, is fallacious in the effort of, you know, it's, 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 um, it's flawed. It's flawed towards the goal of promoting real freedom. Um, so the uppercase L version of that definition is the member of a political party advocating libertarian principles. Um, only in this way would it say that I'm voting along libertarian lines or I'm voting for a libertarian candidate. If you're talking about the big L libertarian, then you could say that you're voting for someone for the sake of language, for the sake of communicating clearly. You can say I'm voting for someone with a libertarian platform or who's a libertarian candidate. Other people might understand what you're saying. I might understand what you're saying, but you're, you're contradicting yourself with regards to the first definition of libertarian, which is an advocate of the doctrine of free will. You can't run for office try to gain political power, and then say that you're an advocate of the doctrine of free will. This is where a lot of people are going to disagree with me. This is where anyone who promotes libertarian politics is going to disagree with me. The fact is, to me, in my perspective, those people who are grasping at straws, trying to use this method of achieving freedom and liberty in, in their lives, are trying to use the very thing they claim to be against in order to um, to achieve the thing they want. It's like literally like trying to fight fire with fire. Um, that phrase is very powerful because it's, it's hardly ever effective. You'd have to be very skilled at firefighting to understand how that method could be applied. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a direct analogy, but you can't take away freedom of other people to achieve freedom. I deny myself the, the legitimacy of libertarian, the big L libertarian party itself, um, because the libertarian principles are defeated through the party. Um, it's a contradiction. Um, the basic overview of the argument, to, to break it down and keep it simple, is something like this. Small L libertarians are advocates of free will. Free will is the capacity of individuals to dictate their own affairs and choices. Big L libertarians advocate a political party, namely the supposed Big L libertarian party. Um, any and all political party seeks political power. Political power is an individual or group's power to rule over or make decisions against or otherwise restrict the free will of individuals. Therefore, the libertarian party, if successful, restricts actual liberty. Therefore, the Libertarian Party is against, is actually against, or the enemy of real individual liberty. Therefore, those in favor of promoting real individual liberty ought not support Big L Libertarian Party politics, nor should they support any other political candidate, including Donald Trump, who is running as part of the Conservative or Republican Party. So, that pretty much takes me to the end of this video. 
um, if anyone would like to add or challenge or um, ask me for elaboration on any of these points, I'd be more than glad to respond in the comments or to possibly create a response video if someone has um, a point of clarity they want or if they have a you know coherent disagreement with any of this, um, I'd be more than willing to address it and uh, try to tackle or sort through it. Um, again, I don't profess to have all your answers for your life. I don't profess to know what's best for you. I'm not suggesting you vote for me. I'm not suggesting that uh, a different candidate would be correct. Um, it might be hard to swallow at first, but there are no right candidates. There is no lesser to evil. There is nobody worth voting for. The best form of vote is to not vote. The best protest you can make against the way things are going, the against freedom in this world, politically, is to not engage with politics. Um, in the next video on this subject, in part two, I'm going to talk about whether or not we should abandon democracy and what better solutions might be, what, what I think can be done, and what other options are out there. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I do value your feedback.